I'm Kathy Thomas, Michael Doctolero, executive chef at Waterman's Harbor, located in the heart of Dana Point Harbor, is a master of fish cookery. Much of the menu is devoted to locally caught seafood, but I asked him to teach us his secrets to cooking salmon. Welcome, Chef. You're going to do a beautiful salmon dish. Tell me about it. Well, today I'm going to do this beautiful wild salmon with shaved organic vegetables and a sofrito that I'm going to teach you that has fennel and mirepoix in it. Oh, it sounds wonderful and it sounds versatile too. It's very easy. It could come out of your garden harvest. It could come, it's year round. And I'll teach you a little couple things about salmon too. Mm, so this is a beautiful piece of salmon you have here. Yeah, this is wild salmon from British Columbia, troll cot, uh, king salmon. And um, there is a difference when you're going out to buy salmon. The wild salmon is going to be leaner because it has to swim to mm -hmm. get its food. And the aquacultured salmon is going to be a lot flakier and a lot fatty, more fatty because right. it doesn't move as much. So, right. Yeah. It's just laying around. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Well, first, I'm going to show you the sofrito. Okay. So in the sofrito here, I just have herbs. I have a little bit of oregano, a little bit of basil, some tarragon, some fennel, which is the key here. Uh, and mirepoix, carrots, celery, and onions. I'm going to cover this in oil. Okay, what kind of heat do you want underneath uh, this? I think we're going to use high heat. We're going to bring the oil into a slow simmer. We're going to let that happen for like 10 minutes. We're going to cool it, pull the vegetables out, and we're going to chop them up so it goes on top right. of the fish. In the restaurant, I don't have any waste. Like The tail will go towards salmon spring rolls. It'll go towards mm -hmm. blackened salmon for Caesars. And I always bias cut probably at a 30 to 45 degree angle, and it'll cook evenly, but presentation-wise, that's always nicer. If I cut sixes, they're gonna be here. And once I get to this bigger part, I normally split the filet, and I'll take out the bloodline. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, what if you go to the market and all you can find is filets that are skinned? That's fine, it's good. I mean, the skin is nice because it's gonna keep a level of moisture in. Is it the, simmering the It's simmering nice. I'm going to mm -hmm. get my little tongs and mm -hmm. turn the vegetables. Could I use the sofrito with other proteins? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can use it with chicken. You can use it with white fish. You can use it with red meat. You can infuse it with chilies. You can infuse it with cilantro. You can infuse it with corn. Anything that you all have on harvest, you can infuse it. I think it'd be delicious with chicken. It, it, it is. Cooking the salmon. We're cooking the salmon. Now, it's very simple, very easy. All I'm going to do is put it in the pan. I'm going to add a little bit of water for moisture. And then I'm going to add some black pepper, mm -hmm. a little bit of lemon. And then I'm going to put them in the oven at 400, 400 degrees. 400 degrees All right. And that's going to bake for approximately 12 to 15 minutes. So, Chef, our salmon is out of the oven. The sofrito is ready. The vegetables are cooked, but they have a little bit of crunch to it, which I mm -hmm. like. So I'm going to take all these vegetables out and then I will chop the vegetables and dice them, and your finished product will look like this with the herbs in it. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I could do this a couple of weeks ahead and have it in the fridge? It'll hold in the fridge at least two to three weeks. Before I assemble the plate with the salmon and the sofrito that I have, I'm gonna show you how I shave the vegetables. I have these great organic vegetables. I have varieties of zucchinis, pickling cukes, yellow squash. Be careful, a lot of times they wanna use a guard, but if you go really easy and your hand placement is good and you're not on the bottom, you won't mm -hmm. get cut. Mm -hmm. And you'll get these beautiful shapes of vegetables. This is a melange of the, of the shaved vegetables with a little bit of Caribbean spinach, mm -hmm. some lacinato kale, and some Egyptian spinach, food of the pharaohs. Right. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this Himalayan salt. And then I'm going to take this salmon, put it on top. Then I'm going to take some of this sofrito. I'm going to take the vegetable and I'm going to drape the fish. Then I'm going to take some of the oil and I'm going to drape the outside. I can tell you, Chef, I can hardly wait to dig in. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's always it's, such a pleasure to see nice you. It's nice to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. Fingerling potatoes, they're such interesting shapes and delicious flavors, but how in the heck do you cook them? And if you just roast them, they get kind of crusty and dry. So I found the best way to do it is to simply cut them in half lengthwise like so, put them in a baking dish, then go ahead and add a quarter cup of dry white wine, a quarter cup of high quality olive oil, and some fresh thyme leaves, and give it a stir. Sprinkle on a little kosher salt, 
and cover them tightly with aluminum foil. Now it goes into a 375 degree oven, cover it up tight for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then you take the foil off and let them go another 20 to 30 minutes. Out of the oven now and they just look gorgeous. They're nice and soft on the inside and crispy on the outside and they can be done ahead and they're even good cold as an appetizer with dips. A little bit of fresh thyme on the top. Fingerling potatoes, they're delicious. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new, have an adventure.